if you happen to have a Ford Transit Connect, which is what we have here, to open the hood has got to be the goofiest thing I've ever seen. So you need the key, you grab the Ford emblem, rotate it around, insert the key, turn it to the left, pops it on the first latch, turn it to the right, and that allows you to take the safety off. I will need my second hand here to do it, but yeah, it's a very goofy way of opening the hood. Weird Ford. We have the transit in and up on the lift. As you can see, we are doing a radiator and a temperature sensor in this. Um, and let's just do a quick walk through. I don't know what someone did to this thing, but uh, it looks like they ran in a tough truck competition. There's mud just caked under this thing. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It was a company vehicle too, so <laughs> somebody was having a little too much fun. The first matter of business is going to be uh, get this radiator drain. There is a drain right here. So we'll get a catch can under there, container, and get all the antifreeze drained out of this and see it appears that you can take this bottom bar off and maybe that maybe the radiator once you remove the fans will come out this way out out of the bottom um, definitely looks easier than pulling it from the top but we'll see we'll see in a couple minutes let's get it drained and we'll go from there we got our coolant drained out so the next step is to remove this bottom bar um, we got this side actually loosened up there's two 10 millimeter bolts one there and one there. Uh, there's also a bracket on there. It holds, <clears throat> I'm sure that's the AC line. So we got the nut removed there. As you can see, this is starting to become loose. Um, we have a couple bolts over here. Uh, this side was missing the little filler plastic piece, air shield, whatever it is. So we did not have to remove it because it was gone. This side does have it. So we'll remove that to give us some more access. And then the bolts for this side are going to be up in that area over there. Um, we also have to unbolt the fans. <clears throat> Again, it looks like a 10 millimeter one there and one over there. So we'll get them unbolted, uh, lower this down and unhook the stuff from up top and then probably raise it back up and remove this last hose. We got that bar out of the way. <clears throat> there is some some tabs on the side here that uh, clip into the the shrouding that goes around the rest of the radiator in the front end. Um, as you can see now, there's nothing really holding this whole thing in. Uh, now that whole thing is the fans. Um, I did try and remove that bolt, and it's just spinning. So it's uh, as you can see, it's extremely muddy and rusty under here. Um, stuff's falling down in my face as I'm trying to work here, which is kind of a pain, but it is what it is. Um, so we'll take the fans out with it. Now the, the AC condenser is actually, it looks like it's clipped in there. There is brackets on the back side of the radiator um, and there's tabs on it and it looks like they're just clipped. So we'll try and get a pry bar and just slide that to the side. I think it's going to remove it. Um, there's a couple, uh, wires that are clipped into the fan shroud so we'll remove those <clears throat> and um, like I said drop it down finish unhooking the stuff from up top I think there's one small hose and one large radiator hose up there and then uh, we'll make sure the fans are unplugged and lower it back down and I think the fans and the radiator are going to be able to be dropped straight down out of the vehicle that did work uh, like I said take a pry bar and just lightly uh, pry over to the side on the condenser there and it pops out of its bracket. One there, one there, and there's obviously two more up top, but now that is loose from the radiator. Um, so it's kind of a pretty simple procedure to, to remove that. It's just slight pop over, it pops out of the mount and you're good to go. Back up top here, like I said, there is one small coolant hose. That's the top uh, radiator here can't really see it but here's the hose um, it's got a squeeze clamp you pull it off they are a little bit of a pain to get to um, so we have that one and then we have the upper radiator hose 
which is right here and again it is kind of under this shrouding here this upper radiator support um, you can get to it it's actually you, can, you might be able to see that it's right there uh, and then we have our wiring unplugged for our fans and I think the only thing we have left is that bottom radiator hose and this whole assembly should drop out let's raise it back up with a little bit of wrestling with that um, AC condenser now we are loose and as you can see we have the bottom radiator hose so be prepared with that with a catch container because it will still leak some even though you drain the radiator they always seem to leak no matter how long you drain them so only thing left to do now is uh, wiggle this side a little bit after that gets undrained and we'll again drop this whole assembly out swap the fans over and try and get that new one up in there have our old radiator out we have our new one set down here of course we do have to swap over the fans and there are some little tabs here or bolts with a uh, flat spot on that will slide in here we have to reuse that one per side so we'll swap those over and our new fan just sits there and bolts in there we'll get that swapped over and we uh, change our rubber pieces our rubber isolators on the top there that'll go up in and then we'll replace the bottoms right before we put our bottom bar on our fans are mounted pull the isolators off they just slip right off slips right on to the new one we're ready to go back in got the new radiator and fan assembly back up in there got our lower hose hooked up we got our, our isolators slid on on the bottom there is a little bit of wrestling you have to do to get this condenser slid back into the mounts um, just make sure your upper mounts it's even hard to kind of see them but make sure the upper mount slides in as these lower mounts slide in it is possible to get the uh, condenser in the the lower ones and out of the top either on one or both sides it can kind of lean back a little bit so just pay attention to that make sure you have it clipped in correctly um, while we're down here we went ahead and plugged in that electrical connection for the fan and clipped that wire back on i think we're ready to reinsert this bottom we lost our mount here it slipped off that needs to be back on there uh, we'll re attach our mount here and again you have to wrestle these uh, little shrouds on either side get them clipped in and there's three tabs on the inside here uh, the base of the grill that that slips into also back up top here we'll reconnect our small hose reconnect our wire connectors make sure they click in there uh, we have one more over here There it goes. Um, just make sure your mounts go in proper. Uh, I had to move them a tiny bit once I got back up top. So uh, we still have to reconnect our upper hose. And I think we're about done. I did go ahead and remove the air box as I was doing this. So we'll reinstall that. And uh, the mass airflow sensor is in that. So we will reconnect that at that time. Um, other than that, we just fill up the antifreeze and bleed out the air, let it get up to temperature, make sure everything's good. We do, uh, we are replacing the temperature sensor in the head. Same times the temperature gauge was not working proper on this, so um, I'll make another video on that. But as far as the radiator install goes, uh, that's pretty much it. It drops out from the bottom. You have to remove a couple of things. Removing this air box just makes it have a little bit more room, wiggle room, especially when you're down there. Because um, it kind of drops down to the driver's side and slips out as you go. So other than that, thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.